right back here at Gold Coast for the what will be the title match in the scratch division here for Boeing the Oatatat format. Pretty good story here as the number 15 seed Jacob Buttruff has won seven consecutive matches, needing to win all seven of those to get into the title match. He needs to win just one more to capture his second career JVT title in dramatic fashion, but he's going up against a tough customer here in number four, Jordan Ferrer, who's made some drama on his own, unfortunately, by having his hand cramp up on him in the last game. Looks like it's obviously doing a little bit better now. Bad break there to not catch the early double and leave a seven pin. Jordan, one of the premier cranker players on tour. One of the highest river rates, at least for a thumb in bowler on tour. Uh, when he cramped, he could barely get like 30% of his normal rev rate. So he had to try and bump it right. Almost still won the game. Looks like it's feeling a little bit better right now, but that has nothing to do with the fact that he just whiffed the spare, which uh, gives the open frame back to Buttruff because he opened in his first frame. So now it's Buttruff with a one pin lead, working on an open in the second. And the unique style of Jacob. There you go. I said earlier in the day, the enigma that is Jacob Buttruff, and you know, Vegas is a Zakatori youth bowling town, but this guy has been matching him uh, result for result in a lot of cases lately. Zach made Team USA in the top, uh, top five at Junior Gold. Jacob, meanwhile, also finished in the top ten at Junior Gold, uh, over uh, a thousand plus bowler field. He beat Zakatori in our TPC, he beat him in a couple other of our events, beat him at the Invitational, and beat him here again today when Zach was the two seed and Jacob was the 15 seed. The only time recently where Zach has beaten Jacob was at the Red Rock title match, and uh, Hattori had to fire 300 at him to get it done. So basically anything less than 300 and Jacob wins the game. So and. Uh, Tori went on to climb the ladder until he played this guy, <laughs> Ferrer, who uh, shot 280 at Tori, needing every one of that because Zach shot 278 in that game. So a, uh, kind of a, a triangle here of good bowling between Jordan, Jacob, and Zach. Jordan, a six-time champ. He's been bowling this forever. He had big success in the handicap division, winning uh, with an Invitational and Bowler of the Year in a handicap. Moved on to scratch years ago and had some pretty good success here. This is his final season with us before he ages out. So he's a, he's verbally stated he wants to win a lot this year and kind of reap the rewards of those years of paying your dues. It's not quite catching at all yet. Hold on the Kegel Audubon pattern today, a very heavy oil pattern. There's still a lot of out of bounds to the right or the left for the lefties. Uh, the right-handed players have kind of burnt out the track area, so they've opened up quite a bit from the start of the day. It looked like a very low-scoring event early on. The scores have picked up considerably in match play. And a second whiffed spare for Ferrer is a, is a gift-wrapped package to Jake. In case you're not familiar with OATOTAT, it stands for one and done or two and through. So in the 16-person match play, the lower seated bowler had to win twice to advance, and the higher seated bowler had to only win once to advance. So if it was one versus 16, the top seed only needed to win one game. Jacob, as the 15 seed, needed to win two games every round. Got by two seed Zakatori, like we talked about, in the first round, winning 2-0. Got by seven seed Cortez Shank in the semis, winning 2-0 and got by six seed Cameron Smith in the next round, winning 2-0. Beat Jordan in game one here, 188 to 145. Yeah, an anomalously low game. And there gets the seven pin to carry out for a four bagger. The time is now, as they say, for Jordan here. He tried to bump it right, and there we go. He tried to bump it right because he just had so little hand on the ball. 
when he was sort of mid cramp there, and that's not a good place on the lane to be. That where he is now is much more where he has to be. I'd still say that's about 80% of the normal rotation he gets on the ball. They got a lot of great sponsors on tour. These guys are one of them. We just happen to be bowling under one of their big banners here, K and K Bowling. The uh, K and K Embroidery makes all of our great shirts. K and K Bowling and Embroidery, a great sponsor of youth bowling and bowling in general. Further right, will it get back? Yes, it does. Boy, Jordan just saying, is it going to hit that hook spot or is it just going to wiggle at the hook spot? Fortunately for him, it hit it. I think one of the reasons that Jacob is still underrated on tour is this very unique delivery. His thumb is in the ball, but it's like he delivers it thumbless. He's got an incredible ability to cup his wrist. And his, his carry is just phenomenal because of it. The, the reason that bowlers take their thumb out of the ball and bowl bowl thumbless or bowl two-handed is to get extra rotation on the ball, but when you take the thumb out, uh, you lose a little bit of accuracy. So part of the reason that the two-handed thing exploded is that you kind of got the best of both worlds. You had the thumb out power, but the thumb in it, a little more accuracy. This is even better than that to me, where the thumb is completely in the whole way. So you get thumb out rotation, and obviously, by the, you know, the definition of it, have thumb in accuracy. It's a wonderful thing to have. Another unique thing about it is he usually uses very, very weak equipment, all the way down to a urethane house ball that is one of the balls that he goes to the most. And he's unique in almost every single way. He's also one of the few left, good lefties we have on tour right now. So we very often has the whole left side to himself. He's got to adjust a little less. less. That infuriates the righties. <laughs> Not his problem, though. He can't help it if he was born throwing that incorrect arm. <laughs> yeah, it's a righty announcing. Tough. Oops. That's right. Pitches that one to the OB there. It's just so frustrating when your body won't physically do what your uh, mind knows it's uh, capable of doing. Busy time of year starting here. We're going to be in Vegas a lot over the next month and a half. So we've got doubles coming up in December, and then the main event week wrap that up in Kingman, then we're right back here the third week of January to continue with the regular season. So let's see, 17-18. It's at least 11 days that there'll be a tournament between now and early January here in Vegas, so check out that schedule, get those reservations in, do not miss it. What Jordan needs to not miss right now is his mark. He's got to catch up immediately. He kept hitting the out of bounds, so we tried to uh, give that ball just a little bit of help here, and it doesn't need the help, and it checked up. Bowling, you know, people who don't bowl, they don't understand what's so difficult about it because they can go out and roll a strike every time, but it's, it's not just the one strike. It's matching ball speed, rotation, angle, and all of that over and over again for the length of our tournaments. We bowled five qualifying games. This is now game eight of match play. 13 games times 10 frames times two balls per frame. Trying to repeat what you're doing and adjust to the changing conditions too. It's, it shows you when someone like Ferrer does struggle just how, A, how good they are, all of these scratch bowlers, and B, how quickly and how subtle a difference can take you from a 240 down to a much, much lower score. Buttruff in cruise control here. He won his first title of a Cliff Castle in September, breaking through for that first win. Sometimes when you win one, they come in bunches, and he's uh, well on his way to number two here. Just kind of got to stay behind the line. Wow. His ball slaps out seven pins better than other lefties. You know, sometimes you see those, those lefties just going up the left-hand corner and carrying sevens and it, it can be frustrating, but 
you know, he's A, he's covering a lot of boards, and B, he just, it's the way that ball, it's just the perfect angle through the one, two. I don't know how else to describe it. Now, it's, it's a performance that Ferrer's going to want to forget, but he does have an excuse, but Jordan doesn't do excuses, I'm sure. He's not going to explain it away just by saying the wrist was hurting. So, Buttruff already has a little mini legend going as far as the things he's been able to accomplish and add to it the first bowler in JBT history to win from a double digit seed in Oatotat. Let alone the 15 seed. He actually had a chance to be the higher seed coming into this because 16 seed Kyle Karpovich also won his first game taking out the top seed Dallas Leong. Wouldn't have that wouldn't that have been interesting if it was 15 versus 16? One of the reasons we do Oatotat is to uh, really make it beneficial to the top seeds in qualifying. It makes qualifying so important because that's such an advantage, only needing one win. It's an advantage, but it's far from a guarantee, as Jacob has just proven here. is Jacob no longer the dark horse. All he did to win today is get by Ferrer, Smith, Shank, and Hattori. Are you kidding me? That is a murderer's row of bowlers right there. And he mowed him down 8 and 0. Oh. If only his parents and guardians were not Cowboys fans. He would he would just be that much better a human being. But unfortunately he's, he's a Vikings fan. Unfortunately he's not being raised right. <laughs> Vikings fan, that's a little better than that at least. Team stinks, but at least it's better. There we, there we go. Well I'm a Tampa fan, so I'm in the same boat. It's alright. Not that pleasant, but Jacob, but dominates the field for the win. Great stuff. Point out the awards and we'll do it all again next weekend at Mesa, Arizona for Best in the West.